Hi, welcome to Kano's Education, Kano's Joy Ministry. Today we're going to talk about how to avoid a faulty gospel. So, we know that in Galatians 1.9, um, Paul warns us about another gospel. If any man preach another gospel, let him be accursed. And 1.7, he says, some pervert the gospel. So, how to recognize this faulty gospel is very, very simple. All you have to do is take a look at God's unfailing love, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and the blessed Trinity. So those are the three important keys that I'm going to go into. God's unfailing love for all creation, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and most commonly confused, believe it or not, is the blessed Trinity. That's where we get into the division, where people start to un unknowingly divide up the Trinity. So especially in evangelical Christianity, um, you know, as a means to get to the Father, you have to go through the Son. He is, Jesus is the only way to the Father, but let me explain what this means um, biblically. So, let's start with, okay, let's start with Psalm 136, verse 26. Give thanks to the Lord for his, his love endures forever. So, God's unfailing love lasts forever, forever in eternity. It never ends. So we always have the opportunity to come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And even, even though he's already forgiven us, when you ask, it opens that door. It just brings a revelation into your heart, into your mind. You can close your mind to Christ. You can close your heart to Christ and not allow him to do the work that <clears throat> that he wants to do in your life because he gives us free will, right? But as soon as we ask, as soon as we open our heart to Christ, there he is because he's always in us. He's always with us. But that participation is the piece that many people are, are missing. And that's why sometimes it feels like his love isn't there, but his love is always there. His, it, it lasts forever. Romans 5 8 says God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners while we were sinning Christ died for us so even in our own misery and our own self-inflicted fear self-inflicted um, guilt shame remorse anger um, jealousy all the gluttony um, greed all the sin that we've produced in our own life <clears throat> he died for us for in that sin he died to for us as us by so 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 his death represents our death so we died with him we were co-crucified co-buried and we co-resurrected and co-ascended with christ so that's the intertwining that's where we talk about no separation we'll get into that too Romans 8, 39 says, Neither height nor depth or anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ. Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, number one, unfailing love. Psalm 46, she will not fail. This is for the ladies. She will not fail. God has put the spark inside of you and you will not fail. That's why... You feel um, led to um, share the gospel. That's why you feel led to show kindness to others. We love because he first loved us, right? So you will not fail. It's restorative. His, his love is never-ending and restorative. So Matthew 2, 13 to 23 talks about this. Job 42, verse 2 says God God's love cannot be thwarted. So... So his plan, his plan won't be stopped. It's also written that his plan won't stop. So, so it can't be, the enemy can't disrupt God's plan um, for salvation. We've already been covered by the blood, right? Um, we just maybe don't know it yet. We're not aware of that. Some of us are unbelievers. We don't believe in it. But does that mean he didn't, he didn't do it? No, it still means that he's done it. It is finished. So, so all of creation is just groaning for the sons and daughters to be revealed. 
116, Colossians 116 says, For by him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, all were created through him and for and by him and for him. Uh, John 1 3 and Hebrews 2 10 says, God's love is restorative, not eternal suffering. Okay, so Psalm Psalm 33, verse 10 to 11, God's love will not fail. There's no failing in Christ. Christ is a um, restorative judge. He is the, Christ is the successful savior of all. He is, he has not failed. And Josh 21, 45. Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all to myself. Okay. In John, he talks about this. He he, we died, we were buried with him, and so he will draw us to him. That says in Romans 6, 4, because we died, we were buried with him by, by baptism to death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Colossians 2, 12. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, in Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away and all things have become new. And Ephesians 2, 6, God raised us up with Christ, seated in heavenly places with him. So this is important when you talk about um, the gospel, you talk about Christ's death, burial, resurrection. It's important to know that we died with him. We were buried with him. We were in a, in a mystical way. That's why I call myself a Christian mystic, because this is very mystical. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but uh, Christianity, true Christianity is mystical. There's a mystery there um, that we were di we died with him and we rose with him. Uh, so that's, that's our union with him. We were, we were co-buried, co-crucified with him. I, I, I wish someone would give a sermon on just that. That's just so beautiful. Um, I haven't heard that in a while. Maybe someone will do that. The Blessed Trinity, number three, okay? 2 Corinthians 5, 19, God was in Christ reconciling the world. So, okay, redundant. I said that before, right? But Deuteronomy 6, 4, listen to the words of the gospel because the gospel was preached even before Christ came. There was so much in the Old Testament, in the Torah, in the Bible, that um, in the prophets that they were um, letting people know about Christ to come. Now listen to this. Here, this is Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our gods are one. Gods. If you look up in the original text, it says gods are one. So God is one. Gods, it seems like three. That seems like, oh no, there's three gods. No, there's not three more gods. Three is one. Three and one. That's the family, the trinity. Um, you could look at it in your own life. You know, you have a fa a mother, a father, and a daughter. A mother, mother, daughter, and mother, father, and son. Just look at the three. The tr blessed trinity. Um, you haven't really experienced the full capacity of God's love until you've had that own love of your own. Like you, you have a baby, you experience it. Or... Your mother experienced it with you, your father. You have that blessed assurance of, of God's love. And if you are, um, if you don't have any children or you um, had, didn't have that experience with a loving father or mother, this is such a gospel for you because you can experience that in the Trinity and God's love for you because God loves you unconditionally more than any um, human person can love you. Because actually God is, God is a human. God is in the flesh. Jesus is God. A lot of people don't, um, they give lip service to it, but they don't talk about it. But God is love. And Jesus came to show us what the Father's like, what the Father's love. That's why God became flesh and lived among us, right? All right, Gen Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image, our image, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in our likeness. John 1, 
verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Every time I share this one, it just like whoo, hits me like really hard. This is so beautiful. This is just, ooh. So, um, yeah, it's just, think about it. Think about, I mean, just let yourself go. Let yourself dive into the scripture. When you read that, listen again. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is Jesus, right? The Word God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, it's so good, so juicy. John 10, verses 24 to 33. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. John 1, 14. Word became flesh and lived among us. John 17, 21 to 23. Jesus' prayer for unity. I didn't... Okay, let me read this to you because we're talking about the Blessed Trinity, right? Keep that in mind. John 17. This is what Jesus prayed as he looked up into heaven. Father, the time has come. Unveil the glorious splendor of your Son, so that I will magnify your glory. You have already given me authority over all people, so that I may give the gift of eternal life to all those you have given me. Eternal life means to know and experience you as the only true God, and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the Son whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth by faithfully doing everything you told me to do. So, my Father, restore me back to the glory that we shared when we were face to face before the universe was created. Jesus prays for his disciples. Father, I have manifested I have manifested who you really are and I have revealed you revealed you to the men and women that you gave to me. They were yours, and you gave them to me. And they have fastened your word firmly in their hearts. And now, at last, they know that everything I have is a gift from you. And the very words you gave to me to speak, I have passed on to them. They have received your words and carry them in their hearts. They are convinced that I have come from your presence. And they have fully believed that you sent me to represent you. So with deep love, I pray for my disciples. I am asking on behalf of the unbelieving world. I am not, I'm not asking on behalf of the unbelieving world, but for those who belong to you, for those you have given me. For all who belong to me now belong to you, and all who belong to you now belong to me as well. And my glory is revealed through their surrendered lives. Holy Father, I'm about to leave this world and return to be with you, but my disciples will remain here. So I ask that you, by the power of your name, protect each one that you have given me and watch over them so that they will be united as one, even as we are one. While I was with these, you have given me. I have kept them safe by your name that you have given me. Not one of them is lost. Not one of them is lost. Except the one that was destined to be lost. So the scriptures would be fulfilled. And we, that's talking about Judas. But now I am returning to you. So, Father, I pray that they will experience... And enter into my joyous delight in you, so that it is fulfilled in them and overflows. I have given them your message, and that is why the unbelieving world hates them. For their allegiance is no longer to this world, because I am not of this world. I am not asking that you remove them from the world, but I ask that you guard their hearts from evil. For they no longer belong to this world any more than I do. Your word is truth. So make them holy by the truth. I have commissioned them to represent me just as you commissioned me to represent you. And now I dedicate myself to them as a holy sacrifice so that they will live and they will live as fully dedicated to God and be made holy by your truth. Okay. And then the next prayer 
is Jesus prays for you, okay? This is a prayer for you. And I ask not only this for disciples, but for those who will come, who will one day believe in me through their message. I pray for them all be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me for the very glory you have given me. I have given them so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. You live fully in me and now I live fully in them so that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convinced that you have sent me for they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that I, you have for me. Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me, because you have loved me even before the beginning of time. You are my righteous Father, but the unbelieving world has never known you. And the perfect way that I... They have never known you in the perfect way I have known you. And... All those who believe in me also know that you have sent me. I have revealed to them who you are. I will continue to make you even more real to them so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. For your love will now live in them as I live in them. So just breathe that in for today and... We're going to stop there because that's a good place to stop. That's a good place to really reflect and think about God's love for you and what that means in your life. So may you be blessed by this message. May you have peace in your day, knowing that God's holy assurance in his love for you and your love in him will last forever and ever. Mm. Keep drinking. Drink up that cask. The new wine, the new wine is in the word. <sighs> and the word became flesh and lived among us. So as we declare the word, it becomes real in our life. So I hope this blessed you. Have a good day.